Good afternoon, folks. Uh, let's see, we are here in the how to measure your lead acid battery bank capacity using an Arduino controller. I think that this is the third video on this series. And uh, what we have for today, actually, before that, let me go right here to this mode. So we have uh, a very good picture. Uh, this is my three battery banks that I have. And these two banks are kind of old, they are about seven years. And this is my new bank, and this is actually the one doing the chief night and everything. So on this project, I wanna have a good idea what's the capacity of all my banks, battery banks, just to do adjustment as required. Uh, so for today, I'm gonna be doing a short introduction, uh, how I plan to do the battery bank measurements planning to use uh, an Arduino microcontroller, how to measure amp hours and what hours. We will talk a little bit about that. And since I'm gonna be using a microcontroller and there's some programming, I wanna be sure that I'm doing this right. So we're gonna simulate the Arduino code within Proteus. And uh, since Proteus doesn't have actually a discharging battery kind of, so what we are gonna do is we're gonna be using a condenser or a capacitor, that was the best word for it, uh, capacitors. And uh, we gonna revisit a little bit the math uh, about discharging a capacitor and how I use that to get the amp hours and watt hours analytically through the beauty of math. And then at the end, we need to compare all these results. I mean, we have analytical results, we have the Arduino code from the simulation, but we also gonna prepare a spreadsheet just to see whether all these numbers make sense at the end. So seven is gonna be huge. I mean, just to be sure that everything looks good. So just to start a little bit on in this introduction, back in 2018, I did an installation of what I call my emergency backup system. It consists of about 14, 40 watts solar backup system. Uh, and uh, it has three battery banks, as I said, two very old and one that's the most recent one, that's uh, about two years. And uh, obviously I noticed that these two banks are lagging a lot behind this one. So this one is actually doing the, the work. And uh, so this is a little bit more of details of what I have. And as I said, bank one and bank two, they're about seven years. Uh, they originally were about 230 amp hours. I don't think that they're, they're much about it. I mean, it's very little what I might have, but that's that's the idea. That's what I wanna check on, on, on them. Uh, the new bank, which is bank number three, uh it's about 230 amp hours and it's interesting a lot of people ask me how i connect all this in a new bank with all banks and that's but that's that's another story that's in another video uh i i will put in the description where where you can get that uh so now what is the actual battery capacity that's where we are heading with this project so we're going to be doing what is called a loading test and uh, for a loading test, basic, very simple. I put a resistive low uh, to my battery bank and check the current through the circuit, the volts, and the time through the discharging process. As simple as that, no big deal. Uh, particularly for a lead acid battery, I will use what is called a C20 discharge test, which basically if you have a 230 amp hour system or close to it or, or whatever, you have left in your system remember my batteries are seven years old and so you divide that by 20 and that gives you roughly the amps uh that you will be discharging through your batteries uh c20 loading tests are typically are, are the values or the type of test that you use to typically report your capacity on new batteries uh however very careful here uh I'm talking about working capacity, which is basically discharging my battery to no more than 50% depth of discharge. If you go continuously above 50%, you will damage your battery bank and you don't want that. You don't want to do that. So basically, <clears throat> there's a number with this 50%, <clears throat> excuse me, 
<clears throat> Excuse me for a second. There we go. Uh -huh. There's a number that you will drop your uh, voltage to about uh, 48.5, not less than that. And that's kind of a, the voltage that will tell you about this uh, DOD. You don't want to go below the 48.5 volts. So this is um, that's basically the setup that I plan to use. Uh, if I were to do this totally manual or manually, uh, you know, put a, uh, a I will use a meter just to check the, the voltage of the batteries. I will use a breaker, another meter to check the current, a clamp meter to, be, to see the amps going through the circuit, and a heating element. Uh, obviously, when you throw the breaker on. I mean, just the battery will start to discharge. This will get very hot, so it has to be put in a bucket of water, you know, or um, a fan or something that cool it off because it's gonna get very, very hot. And you watch that as a function of time. And with that information, you know, you will be able to come out with the, your capacity, your battery capacity. Uh, is uh, the problem with that, with this setup, if any, is that you will be there watching the chart process for many, probably many, many hours, and uh, and probably uh, you will, you know, uh, forget about it, and all of a sudden your battery will drop below the 48.5 that I told you that they shouldn't. Anyway, how to solve that? Well, you use an Arduino. That's the beauty of it. The Arduino through this uh, solid state relay. Uh, some people has asked me why a solid state relay and not a MOSFET. Um, I could have used a MOSFET. There's MOSFET. Uh, they are good for uh, 200 volts. I mean, uh, 50 amps, and uh, they're not that expensive. They might be about ten dollars a little bit. But the problem with the MOSFET, if any is that you will have to then to get uh, the proper voltage to dry them. I mean, they're not easy to be dry with five volts. And that's why I use a solid state relay here instead of a, a MOSFET. Uh, this solid state relay with a liter as one volt, a little bit more than one, about two volts, they will close this circuit. And uh, remember, this solid state is for DC as well. I mean, the, this size, not for AC, it's for DC. It's important that you know that. Uh, I'm closing, when this relay close, it's closing a DC load. And uh, obviously a DC load would never go through a zero, like an AC type of, uh, uh, of voltage. And uh, so it has to be a special relay, obviously, uh, otherwise you will destroy it. So I'm using a DC solid state relay to do this trick. So the Arduino, when you are ready to measure uh, the discharge process, you close uh, this relay here and then current will go through your heating element uh, again discharging the batteries the other part into it that you have to measure the voltage uh, into the uh, analog pin as shown here A1 uh, you do that through uh, a voltage uh, divider and get the proper voltage and as the battery get discharged the charge, then uh, you know you monitor that and then you get amp hours and the watt hours and everything will be displayed here again this uh, part of this uh, diagram I took from uh, a youtuber uh, credit will be provided at the bottom at the description of, of this video now how is the data acquisition this is another question that some people ask me and I have to be very careful here how I explain this for example when you tell Arduino to start measuring the discharging process there's a time that it takes from here to here to do that. And when this number is eventually show, that's what I call zero time. And uh, and then you start, the Arduino start to do other stuff like presenting the result into the LCD display and so forth. And then goes to take more data. And, and that's at the end of it is when you again present that uh, point, uh, you know, that data or that uh, value at a given time now the difference between this point and this one is what I call the elapsed time very important the elapsed time is the integration time that I take from this value 
to this value this will continue until obviously the battery or the capacitor has dropped to a given value that you are monitoring uh, and our calculation uh, this is what is called the area under the curve uh, for amp versus time and I'm using on this comes that is called a trapezoid uh, trapezoidal type of approach because basically at time zero you have a value after an elapsed time t1 you have another value and now you have to calculate these two areas I mean the area on the this curve so you use a trapezoidal type of approach where you have h1 plus h2 which are the this value divide by two you get the average of them and multiply by this time which is called the elapsed time so and this is how trapezoidal you get the area uh, under the curve for one but now you do that again at a time t2 so you have another area that you have to calculate and so forth so you keep calculating areas until you get uh, the total amp hour for your battery bank uh, as I said there's an example here we can go through it very quickly like for example at time zero I read like 10.25 amps remember this number are actually calculated from the fact that if I go back one second I'm not using uh, here or I should I, I, not now I mean I, I can add it later like a shunt I haven't added a shunt so I'm, I'm, I'm basing the amp going through here uh, through uh you know ohm's law that's it uh and i'm also using i'm planning to use a clamp for calibration just in, just in case you know a clamp meter just to ensure that the current that i'm calculating is precisely the value that is going through all right so let's go back again to here so i clock you know after i clarify the fact that these numbers are calculated based on the voltage and the and the heating load and the heating element uh, resistant uh, value so I get at time zero this value at 3.41 uh, seconds later I got 9.77 and and so forth so I mean I mean this is just uh, kind of a, an example of how the information will be gathered by the Arduino so for the first segment is basically the average of these two values so as you can see uh, the calculation of the average multiplied by the elapsed time this minus this so that give you 33.1 amp seconds remember you have to divide it by three, uh, 3600 just to get amp hours and you get the first so this value here for example will be this value here the area of this first segment how about the second segment when well, you do the same with the 6.2015 and the 917 you get it here you get the average then you get the difference between this value and this value which should ha which shouldn't change much uh, there could be a fraction here and there but it shouldn't change but anyway I it's good practice I do the difference instead of trying to uh, you know to set to a particular value so and I use the uh, millis function or millisecond function which is part of the Arduino library just to get the numbers right so anyway you get the area of that segment and then you have this area so you want to know what's the amp hour at t2 at this time then you add this number plus this number and so forth you keep adding until the voltage had dropped to the minimum voltage that you want to cut off uh, the process in essence if we compare that with an actual battery discharge process uh, the battery will look more like this if it's a capacitor it will look like a straight line but this is more like a battery go like this like for example it start at 52 volts and then it will start to drop quickly a little bit and then it will stay there for a while until it get to a point like for example 48.5 for me uh, or for my battery which are lead acid battery meaning it means about 50 percent discharge and i, I don't want to go more than that because it's damaged the batteries so this is the total time that I will be watching those batteries in, through the discharging process and the Arduino will be doing this the recording not actually the recording but the sum of all this all the area under the curves just to get the amp hour which eventually is the capacity but as well the Arduino will be uh, calculating the watts 
which is basically uh, the, the, this you multiply the voltage time the amps consume or the amps so you multiply that that will give you what so what also as a function of time the area under that curve that curve sorry for that will be watt hours and that's energy so this is how i plan to do this uh in the arduino and this is the simulation of the code i'm doing the simulation in uh, uh, uh in proteus uh and basically i can uh, there's no a battery or a, a chemical battery that i can put in proteus but i I can use a, con a, a, a capacitor and basically you can charge the capacitor to any bolt that you want and uh, by closing this and uh, you open it later on then you close this and let Arduino know that we are ready to discharge the capacitor uh, and this is how it works so then you have a fuse here a little bit more you know into the real stuff that I will have eventually when I design all this uh, I'm using here uh, a relay, a mechanical relay, because I, I couldn't find uh, in Proteus uh, a solid state uh, relay. You could build one, I mean, with all the parts that you have uh, on Proteus, but I said that's another project, I don't want to do that. So I stay with the mechanical relay. There's, uh, when this closed, there's a resistor, there's a resistance value here as well, and, and so in the fuse. So you have to add those to this one just to get the proper current. Uh, going through the discharge process and uh, I'm, I'm here you see the voltage divider just to get the proper voltage into the Arduino and here is the LCD display to get the numbers and uh, one thing that I have to say Proteus execute this in real time so if you put a large capacitor oops sorry for that if you put a large capacitor here uh, this will take uh, hours to discharge and uh, so like for example, uh, I'm doing the the closer. I want to get as close as possible to the real uh, uh, project, uh, and I know that some of my battery van will take easily about eight nine hours for discharging. So with that said, I'm per, I'm using here a huge capacitor or a huge capacitor bank. Let's say sixty four thousand. I like that number, so I work with that. And, and that take a while uh, again uh, this is just the concept I'm using capacitor instead of an actual you know uh, lead acid batteries and uh, but it's just because of Proteus it, it allows me really to test the code uh, in, in very deep and uh, so uh, as I said with the Proteus I mean, sorry, with, uh, with the Arduino, I can turn on the solid state relay. So complete the circuit, discharging uh, uh, the, the battery bank through this heating element. <sighs> Remember, I'm, I'm putting this here just to ensure that you don't forget that needs to be cooled off because this is gonna get hot, extremely hot. And I have done this before uh, for testing solar, uh, solar panel, just to ensure that they work. and with very little voltage from a solar panel this get very hot uh anyway so with that warning i guess that we are pretty much done let's see oh perfect uh we did the introduction battery bank measurement setup i'll talk about that planning the use on arduino uh, i did uh how to measure amp hours and what hour i explained a little bit the curve i mean the area under the curves for both proto simulation i talked about that and the only thing left are these two, six and seven, which is rev revising a little bit the math for discharging a capacitor and how I plan to get the amp hours and the watt hour analytically through the beauty of math. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, after we do all that, then we will have numbers from at least uh, analytically. Yes, I mean, you get a value of uh of how many farad you have in a capacitor and you do all the math and you get amp hours and what hours but you need to compare that with uh the result that you are getting from the arduino are they are the same uh how about a spreadsheet i want to ensure that i do as close as possible as what the arduino is doing so basically i will be able to compare all the numbers uh you know for the discharge process either analytically through a spreadsheet or actually the Arduino code through the simulation process. With that said, 
uh, let me change here gears and let's move to the math part and uh, this requires a little bit of calculus uh, I don't know what to say except that uh, uh, maybe you will learn something stay with me here thank you let's see if I can start writing so let's say that we have a capacitor in general this is the symbol for a capacitor as you as you can see here uh, we are going to discharge the capacitor through a resistor we're going to return back here now the direction of the current will be as follow so basically this is how we're going to present in this this is the voltage on my system and uh, this is a value of R and the capacitor will be a, a capacitance value of C value okay so that's in general how we want to work that if we do a Kirchhoff analysis of this that will be minus the voltage here starting here this like size positive this is negative this is size positive so it will go like minus C plus the current in this case I so that will be I time R equals zero okay so that means that I can say I can complete this and set and say uh, uh, the voltage equal I time R no problem there now what is the current now what is I well I within a capacitor the way it works let's say that is proportional actually let me put here it's proportional to uh, the chain in voltage with respect to time and that the uh, proportionality is provided then by the capacitance of the capacitor in this case by the Faraday's or C by the change in voltage with respect to time now uh, it, uh, there's an issue here is that I want the current go this way however uh, here uh, Delta V is getting smaller so the voltage is getting smaller so I need to add a negative sign here to correct for that problem after that then I can say that the voltage anytime equal I but what is I is this what I have here is C dvdt or the chain in volt in the voltage uh, by the chain in time and that multiplied by R let's put the R somewhere here so it looks good RC let's rewrite this a little bit more so I'm gonna have minus RC times dvdt if I do s variable separation I can have let's put it this way so it looks pretty dvdt the chain in voltage with respect to time equal to uh, minus uh, V over RC okay now uh, what I have is let's separate variables now it looks a lot better equal uh, DT over RC and here is the negative if I do the integration on both sides now the question is when the time is zero so the voltage here and my capacitor that bolt the initial voltage is called V naught or the original voltage that's V naught and this is uh, at a given time T at a given time V so with that said the integration of dV over V that's the logarithm the logarithm natural now of V now this need to be evaluated between uh, V and V naught and that's equal the integral DT is obviously T over RC and that need to be uh, evaluated between 0 and T with that said then the only thing that we need to do is complete the, this part here log of V minus log 
of v naught equal this part here the integration here it's going to be minus trc uh you put the negative outside minus zero over rc obviously this is zero and then you end like log of v if we apply uh, the rule of the differential of logarithm we can have v over v naught equal uh minus t over rc see now we are almost done so we're gonna have a a function that tell us how the voltage in the capacitors change as time go by with that said we will end let's uh, put this equation a little bit different so let's take both sides and elevate it to the e so e to the log this cancel out and get v over v naught equal e to the minus t rc or the voltage anytime equal the original voltage time e t to the rc here we are this is the first equation that is very important that's the way we need uh because at the end we want to get amp hours for our capacitor which is the capacity but also we want watt hour which is the energy not only that we want to have a good idea of amp hour and watt hour within a range within a range of voltage in other words when a volt when a capacitor discharge you start at a value let's call it v naught but it start to discharge in function of time like this however uh, what is important to understand is that not all this voltage is practically or can be uh, be used uh, in real in real life I mean you can use to certain range and let's say that that range is limited from here to here is the range that you can use for a certain load like for example are you using capacitor to drive an inverter so the inverter will see if the inverter is for 48 volt then typically an inverter for 48 volt cannot of cut off either at 42 or 40 or 40 uh, uh, volts it will cut off so you might say that the this is will start at v naught but then at a different voltage it will let's say at a v1 it will cut off and this is the time that the, you need to find to find out just to understand what you will do, how you calculate amp hours and what hours because it will depend of of this curve now with that said so let's work out how we're gonna get so we now no voltage the question is how can we get amp hours okay so just to get the amp hours basically what we need to do is to go back to our circuit let's put it around here oops and we know that the curve uh, the current e or i the current i and this is the capacitor and uh, the capacitor with a c value and an r value on the and this is uh, starting with a b naught so i which is the current or let me put it this way let me let me write this so uh, instead of b naught here just write it for more a general expression b so we have v which is the voltage of my system is uh, negative and positive so minus b plus i time r equals zero a Kirchhoff uh, law so we have b equal i r so i is nothing more than the voltage over r in that case we can say we know the voltage so my current will be b naught e to the minus t over rc i mean t over rc and that divided by r okay 
So, but we want amp hours. That's what we want. Oh, that, that would be easy because the only thing that we need to do is to integrate, uh, you know, through the time uh, variable, and that would be I dt a delta time equal a b naught e to the minus t r c over r dt. If we want to integrate both sides, and then we figure it out that at time zero, time zero at any value of t, at any value of t, this integral in essence will produce something similar as amp hour. Depending of the unit that I use in B naught and R and so forth, I mean, you have to be careful uh, in the sense that uh, this would might end up amp second. Let's just entertain the fact that it's amp hour for now. And so what I'm saying is that amp hour of our system equal uh, some uh, unit conversion call it fee that's just a unit conversion it's a number times uh, the integral of 0 to t uh, b naught we can take it out over r e to the minus t rc dt now uh, this integral uh, we can use like anybody like, like they told you they told you in in calculus like for example, let's use a substitution. U, just to make life easier, equal T over RC. So DU is nothing else than DT over RC. So that DT is RC DU. If I substitute this in my integral, so amp hours equal phi equal B naught over R. And then uh, multiply that by my integral which is e to the minus t r c but as we said that it's going to be u so that we end up e minus u the t that's going to be r c i'm going to put that r c let me give some more space here sorry for that i move this one here that would be r c i take it out of the integral just because uh it's a constant then uh d u that's it i We'll add the limit later, but plus a constant, integration constant, we'll work it out later. So amp hours in my system end up being phi times B naught over R, RC, we can cancel the R. This integral is minus E to the minus U, all right? Be careful with the negative there. And uh, plus C, plus an integration constant. If I go back to my original equation, then I get an expression, the amp hour equal phi uh, v naught c, uh, this negative, let's put it that way, uh, that back there. Then I have e to the minus u, but u is t over rc, and this needs to be evaluated within the limit 0 and t, 0 and t. If I work out now the details, amp hour equal my conversion factor b not c uh, let's open a bracket here e to the minus t r c minus e to the zero r c close the bracket and obviously this go e to the zero that's one i have a negative here that will interact with this as well and we end up like amp hour equal uh phi v not c bracket one minus e to the minus t r c close the bracket and that's it that's our second formula so we have a way to calculate the amp hour of our system actually let me complete the phi let me tell you what is phi right now second version factor if v not is volts and c is faraday then you divide by 3600 and you're done and then you have the, the, the complete formula for amp hour for your system you only need to find you don't you only need to set at what time you want that like for example let's say that uh, t 
goes to infinity uh it's obviously that e to the minus a big number e to the minus this whole number will get very very small and and then you end that for a capacitor you end up like this and that will be at the condition of maximum time that you're gonna drain the capacitor up to zero that there's no volt so this is the formula that you get for doing that okay uh let me see so we got that already that's what is called amp hours uh let's work uh maybe a small let's see a small uh, should i should i do that let's see um let's work the watt hour let's work the watt hour so i work the amp hours let's work the uh, watt hour what hours now that's a different function basically watts is uh voltage time current if you multiply those two then you get the watt so i need to i need to obviously and this is by uh by time so you get eventually what hours so how we do that let's work with the watts what i said is voltage time current voltage we worked that equation a few minutes ago voltage is this equation that is here v0 so it's v0 time e to the t over rc that's voltage what is i but i is the same function again b0 e to the minus t r c but this one is divided over r see now if i multiply this w by delta t let's do it here then if you allow me to copy this because i'm going to use it again If I multiply that by the delta t both both sides, then uh, let me collect few things here and there so it looks prettier. W delta t now b times b naught that's b is not square. That's an r. You get here. Now I have e to the minus t r c same base, uh, so we can sum uh, or add this term here so that will be e to the minus 2t over rc dt now it looks better so if i integrate this side and integrate this side from time zero to some time t again remember if i want what hours there's going to be a factor here that will show up and, and you already know the factor it's 3600 all right so let's work out it that out so what hours for my system that's the energy contained when i'm discharging a capacitor will be given by uh b naught square r and let me put here the factor as well 3600 so we don't forget about it and uh by the integral of this part here but again we can certainly do a substitution if you allow me to do that let's do it down here so i got the values so it's u let's say is 2t over rc so the u is 2dt over rc so dt is rc over 2 uh, du so with that said i can go back here and fix this so it's the integral of e to 2dt rc that's e to the minus uh, u this 2t rc that is here uh and dt is rc let me put that rc here and the two here uh du plus an integration constant so with that said uh let's start to collect numbers here and there so we end up with uh b naught square this r cancel with this r so i end up with a c here and a two here and f 36 whoops 
and 3600 right there and this integral we already know what it will produce a negative so we put the negative here e to the minus u plus a constant if I return back to the original time con time variable so we end up with what our equal minus c v naught square over 2 3600 uh, now that integral uh, as I said which is in t that's e to the minus 2t rc and that need to be evaluated between time 0 and time t uh, wh equal uh, now minus cv naught square over 2 3600 and open a bracket at t e to the minus 2 t r c minus e when 2 times 0 divided by r c is a negative here close the bracket obviously this is uh, go to 1 because all this go to 0 e to the 0 is 1 so we end up w the energy within a capacitor is nothing else than let me put this negative back here so it end up being like c b not square divided by and a half and 3600 just to get the right unit the what hour that you want now uh back here uh this term that is uh negative with this negative is gonna go positive and then we end up minus 2t over rc close the bracket and that's it so we have now our three formulas just for getting this you know that looks a lot better than what i have here let's get the let me get the three formula together so so it looks a lot better so that's what our uh voltage is nothing else than b not e to the minus t r c and a current or sorry uh amp hours which is the other important variable that one amp hours uh hours right here so we want the fo the complete formula let's copy from here copy let me see uh, we can erase this no problem and uh, we have there so I have now let's see I have uh, what hours looks a lot more mm, when I kind of bracket the three of them because we're gonna be testing this so I have uh, voltage what hours actually let me put this like the third one Put it here. Here we go. So I have this. This is the end of this voltage, amp hours, and watt hours for a capacitor. So that's how this works. So notice it that um, I have a project in where I will be using an Arduino in a circuit sort of like this. In where you have a bat instead of capacitor let's say a battery bank and the battery bank is at 52 volts when it, the batteries are charged and uh, and uh, I will be discharging them through uh, a heating element that uh, which is of a 5.96 uh, ohms and uh, and that's how it goes so my Arduino is connected here and uh, is integrating the current 
uh, that it goes through the system until the batteries drop from 52 I would say the range that I'm going to be using is 52 to about 48.45 and this is where the Arduino you know uh, it's not actual 48.5 48.5 I mean 48.5 48.45 will be good enough for me for the voltage drop so it's drop is the voltage but this is more like a battery so a battery uh, looks more like this and it will stay for a little while and then it suddenly boom drops very quickly so and uh let's say that this is the 52 and this is the 48.5 and that's for uh again lead acid batteries okay this is lead acid batteries so the you can see how the uh, eventually in function of time you are monitoring the voltage of the battery bank all the time and since you know the resistance then you know the current at all the time so you can do uh, you can do a numerical integration of both amp hours and watt hours which is basically what I'm doing uh, with my battery bank but to test the Arduino code just to ensure that my Arduino code is perfect so I revisited my three equations required for capacitor because I'm testing the Arduino code and uh, and the discharging process within uh, Proteus uh, in Proteus I'm doing a simulation but I'm using capacitors not actual real-life batteries uh, I'm using a capacitor because that's what I have available for in Proteus so I'm using a capacitor but to, to be very close to batteries you know to lead acid batteries that capacitor is huge i mean talking about 64,000 capacitor faradays and the r that i'm talking about is 5.96 see so that's the two values that i'm using and the question is if i have uh, a capacitor 64,000 and me, my ch charging my original charging is 52 volts then how long because that's, those are the questions that will show up I mean how long it will take from 52 to drop to 48.45 and that's one of the questions that we need to answer because that how long it takes to get here that will answer time when you know time when you know the time for the 48.45 then you can continue and calculate the other two variables because basically you can continue and look what is the amp hour of your system because you know the time and you know uh, and here whoops I'm missing this part here and, and so in this equation so you can use I mean you can use uh, this analytical solution just to uh, approach and have an idea whether the Arduino is doing the right thing numerically versus you doing it analytically so let's let's work out the number like for example the first number is how I get time well let's go back to our voltage equation which said B equal a B naught times e to the minus t rc so we are looking for t because we know v and we know v not v is 48.45 uh let's work that out and this number comes more, more i mean i i should i might have said like 48.5 but come more from the arduino part just because of the of the numerical integration that is doing and so forth anyway so let's uh, let's work out the details so that will end up uh, uh, I'm gonna work for, for T this equation so that would be B over B naught equal E to the minus T R C if I take the log of both sides that's the log of B over B naught equal uh, minus T over R C or T the time equal R C time the log of V 
over B naught and there's a negative here and that's it so let's pull a calculator let's see if I can do this in a calculator and get the numbers right uh, let's see let's pull a calculator here a big one let's see if you can do that there we go now there we go I got everything there and now let's work out the numbers so uh, the number where RC R R is 5.96 oops point uh, 96 I hit uh, point five point ninety six time uh, sixty four thousand. Let's see if I can do it from here as well. That's five ninety six RC times the log of V over V naught. Now we need L L L a log. Uh, see sixty four thousand and now let's see multiply by uh, uh, log in, in, in base 10 and 10 base and this is the uh, natural log good 20 base provide the natural logarithm okay log and this will be uh, 48 uh -huh. Point forty five. Oops, missed the point. Forty eight point forty five divided by fifty two. Close the parenthesis, and I think that we got everything except the negative sign. It does not doesn't matter. We can work it out later. And let's see what we got. Uh, we got a number there, uh, but remember, there's something missing here. Let's see if you remember what it is. Uh, well, actually not. It's, it's right. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's just the negative. I got, got scared by the negative. I forgot to put the negative. And I, was talk, I was talking to you about it. So anyway, it's 26,972. 26,972. Let's go back to my writing. So the time here is 26,972. And just for the sake of the argument, let's put the number here. R is 596 C 64,000 and the uh, log of 48.45 a little bit less than 48.5 which is the maximum and uh, B nuts 52 and that's it uh, if I check this this is seconds if I check the significant figures uh, the 64 let's say that it has three significant figures so this is basically like saying um, something like this this number uh, 60 uh, 640 time 10 to the to the uh, to the two yeah there we go and uh, and uh, this is 52.0 that's three significant figure more or less so that end up this number at a three significant figure I can say that this seven will round this one and we you end up with uh, 27 thousand seconds so here we go that's the number that's the time it takes to drain your capacitor from 52 volt down to 48 point 45 a little bit less than the 48.5 mark and, and you know where this number come from this number come from you know uh, uh, lead acid batteries should not be drained below this number because basically that number will indicate that your lead acid batteries has been discharged about 50 percent so you don't want to go above you know f a further after the 48.5 trying to get more amp hours that's not good that would damage your battery bank so you want to leave it at 48.5 so anyway so that's the time basically 27,000 seconds uh, is required uh, to discharge 
your batteries. If I put that number in perspective, I think, uh, let me go back here to my, and let's see if I can take that number. And, uh, and uh, let's see, where's the divide by? Uh, divide, okay, good. By, that's a second, 3600. Let's put the 3600 here. Uh, I don't know. It went somewhere. Yep, 3600. Let's see. Um, seven hours and point forty nine. Wow, so many decimal places here in this calculator. It's weird, uh, kind of confusing. And forget about the negative. So that's seven point five, basically hours. Uh, seven point five hour, seven hour and a half to discharge the capacitor. That's what it really means. And uh, let's go back again uh, to here. So I got the time. Good. Now. The question is, how about how about the amp hours in my system? Let's go back here. Amp hours. Oh, that would be easy. You take this. And you write it down here. You write it down here. And let's substitute the numbers. So amp hours. It's going to be B naught, that's 52, times C, 64,000, divided by 3,600, times 1 minus E to the minus T, but that T is 27, divided by R, 596, uh, divided by C, and C is 64,000. two number are here multiplied by them and uh, close the bracket and that's it uh, it took me kind of a, a while to do this in the calculator because I'm using the surface without keyboard and every time I got that lousy keyboard from my surface uh, the screen it just bothers me uh, let me try one more if not I will have to put the keyboard Okay, let's work the numbers. Actually, uh, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's go here. Let's erase all this mess that I have here. And uh, again, uh, see, 52 times the 64 times the 3600. And uh, okay, so oops, uh, wrong place. Um, here we go. So the numbers that we are looking at, so let's make the numbers here. See how that this looks like. So that will be uh, the capacitor 64,000. You see how I hate this because it's jump for and then I don't see what's doing. Uh, hold for one second here. I will do this right. Gonna use my keyboard. I hate this pop up keyboard, bothering me a lot. Now I'm with the keyboard, and now life is a lot simpler. So that's the 64,000, and that uh, need to be multiplied by uh, V naught. Uh, that's 52, and uh, and that has to be divided by 3600, and that had to be multiplied by a bracket, and that would be one minus the exponent. Let's open this one here and now we have minus 27,000 that's in seconds and that has to be divided by R which is 596 
but it also has to be divided by the 64,000. Funny the way I do it right now, right? Because I, you see this division, and then you see this division, which will be the same if I put a, a parenthesis and do them together. I, I don't like that. I like, like this is easier. Let's just keep going. Then I have the two brackets, hit it, and I will have a number with <laughs> 32 uh, decimal places. I just got this calculator from the internet. I don't know. It found, it, I found it interesting. And uh, 63.23 significant figures. You want the other numbers? I don't know what you want to do with them, but it's 63.2. So that's the number, 63.2. Let me go back to my here, and let's try to write that down here. So the amp hour is 63.2 amp hours. Uh, that's uh, at 48 volt, I mean, that's a decent amount of energy. 63.8 amp hours. Typically, like for example, for uh, uh, electrical bike i mean uh well you get like 20 amp hours at 48 volts and so forth and and those systems cost about 400 dollars 500 dollars so you get if i get 63.2 amp hour at 48 volts i mean not with capacitor remember i'm only simulating the conditions uh, or the of the code of the arduino using capacitors in uh in uh in produce that's why i'm working with capacitors and revisiting all that formula and everything there so anyway 63.2 amp hour now the question is what about the energy what about the watt hours well it's simple with that because basically what you have to do is go back to your formula which is here here which is this one here and and use it uh let me copy this because there's a couple of things here that will be kind of a very interesting and relevant to things that you probably have seen before. Okay, I'm writing in my surface in the kind of a very difficult position. So if my writing looks kind of ugly, more ugly than already is, it's just because I'm writing even in a more difficult position just to keep the keyboard attached to the surface. Anyway, uh, one thing that you will quickly discover, what happened if I take all the energy of the capacitor? So when T, the question is what happened when T goes to infinity, then you will say, well, E to the minus infinity, that's zero. So you can that the watt hours for your system is nothing more than C V naught square over two. And probably you have seen this formula before a lot, I mean, a lot of places that is the, the voltage of the capacitor square times the capacitor of the capacitor divided by two. Now the 3600 is because we want watt hour, no joules. If I leave the 3600 out, that the answer will be on joules, but I want watt hours. So that means I have to put the 3600 here and that's it. But this is only apply when this is true. If you fully discharge your capacitor, you know, so that if your inner voltage was 52 and you drive that capacitor to zero, then the energy content of that capacitor will be this number there one half the capacitance of the capacitor multiplied by v naught square and that's driving the capacitor from 52 volt down to zero or from whatever voltage you have charged previously your capacitor i mean in my case it's 52 volts now the question is what is the what hours for my system uh remember that my time here let's put then the numbers here let's start c is 64,000 uh v naught is 52 but that 52 has to be square uh all these have to be divided by 2 and they also have to be multi divided by 3600 to get the right units and now this has to be multiplied by 1 minus exponent to the minus 2 now 
you have a 27,000 second here, all right? And that has to be divided, sometimes it's a little bit hard, divided by R, that, that's, uh, hold for one second here. Okay, that has to be divided by R, which is uh, 596, and also I have the 64,000 here, and get the square there. And that's it. That's the number that we want to punch in the calculator and see what it will produce in. Let's see what will come out. Let's go to calculator for a second. I can use some of these to make life easier because it's part of it. So I got uh, the these numbers. It's just need to be square. That's the bolt. And I just need to divide all that by 2 times 1 to the 26. I need to multiply this by 2, 2 times. 27,000 divided by 596. It looks now that uh, I got everything just because of the uh, um, hour before. So I got the 64, 52, square, 3600 divided by 2, 1 minus exponent of minus 2, 27, 596, 64. Looks good. Enter. And I got the number. So is uh, 3173 uh, within the significant figure. So I can go back to writing on my surface. So the what hours that I will be expecting on a system like this, it's going to be 3173, 3173. Yep. And, uh, and that's obviously what hours. And, and those are the numbers. So uh, again, this is analytically, I am solved, I solved the discharging the, the 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 discharging step for the capacitor calculate the voltage how the voltage drop uh, how much current so the amp hour were calculated from there and so the watt hours that's perfect now let's for a second let's see if this number makes sense so i start to develop uh let's put this big let's see if i can put this uh, in the largest content so as I said, I mean, you can have a, 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 a large capacitor bank like this one or a tiny one like this one. I mean, it's just the number will change definitely. Or, and, and what I'm talking a large capacitor bank there, there, there's some on the internet, they're expensive. Although, I mean, you have, you have this one, which is a 54 volt, 150 Faraday cap capacity uh, 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 battery, sort of like a battery bank. Uh, very still 150 Faraday is still low for my taste. Would like to see a big number there. Like for example, the one that I'm using, which is 64. Uh, if I go here, let's take a look here. So B not, I can change this to the numbers that I want. Like for example, 52. Uh, delta T. Uh, and here is uh, a little caviar. I'm doing more like the Arduino is doing. So there, in the Arduino, you are integrating uh, the amp hour calculation is, and then integration is shown here on the, under the sum column. You will see the numbers, what is there inside. And also I'm integrating the watt hours. So you see that here on the sum, okay? So because I wanna look more like the Arduino, not obviously I cannot do it analytically in the Arduino because I'm more into, you know, uh, use the Arduino to actually measure the amp hours of, of, a, of a given capacity bank of a you know capacity of a battery bank. So now let's say I'm, I'm using an, a delta T integrated of 10 seconds. The R is 596, and the capacitance of my uh, capacitor. Let's put the right number here. 64,000 is the one that I'm using. Huge. That did some changes. If I go through this. Uh, time zero, uh, time zero uh, in hours, voltage, the original voltage, that's 52. 
obviously come from here but here's just the voltage drop formula uh, a10 that's the time in seconds uh, b$6 that's the r and b$7 that's the c and the b and this and these two numbers are within parentheses just to do this right and uh, and that's it so when you got the voltage then you just divide that by the load which in this case is uh, r with 5.96 and that give you current so amp hours is obviously there's no time uh, we're already through so there's nothing in amp hours uh, we are just starting and so the sum is zero how about what well what is b time e uh, voltage time current and that will give you this number so what hour again we are starting in the integration time zero there's no uh, what hour neither so the sum is zero after that let's say uh, after I fed I get the first uh, step on, of 10 seconds so voltage haven't dropped yet very little uh, at least at one significant figure well sorry three significant figure drop very little I can put more decimal places here but I don't want to do that so the current I'm watching it very closely you will say why so many uh, digits there oh I, I want to compare that with the Proteus Proteus calculate also the current so I want to be sure up to what point we are so close to it anyway so amp hours now it start to sum as you can see here in this formula is basically this high and this high divided by two because I'm using a tra trapezoid type of integration uh, divided that's it. so I, I average those high and multiply that by delta t that's this time here the 10 second and divide by 3600 just to get the right unit and so forth so this part here is just the sum as you can see uh, uh, it's just uh, adding this term as they go by and what as I told you that's what it is and now here is what is important the formula as well so it's using the trapezoidal rule for integration as well and eventually this is just the sum and keeps adding 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 now the important part is if you remember these are the numbers uh, the numbers is all this happen uh, uh, this number and this other number here and the 63.2 and the 3173 those numbers if I make like this happen at a time of 27 thousand seconds so let's go back to the Excel table that I have here and let's look for the uh, 27 south and wow that's very uh, 27 almost there yep 27 right here you see 27 48.45 you remember that number and 63.2 and the what hours 3172 perfect right on the money so for a 27,000 seconds our capacitor our battery bank whatever you, whatever you want to call it has dropped to 48.45 we don't want to drop any long any more than that uh, because we are simulating like a lead acid batteries and uh, that means that I will have a, 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 in terms of amp hours I have consumed about 63.2 and with a total what uh, hours of 3172.80 so that basically it uh, again we compare uh, the analytical this is all this all was kind of an analytical solution to the problem of discharging a capacitor again we start with the uh, Kirchhoff equation we I mean the, this is the circuit we apply Kirchhoff we eventually our f intention or objective of this uh, demonstration was to calculate amp hour and watt hours for our capacitor it doesn't matter whether it's tiny like this or it's a huge bank like this it's the same just just put the plot the numbers and eventually we find the first equation is how the voltage drop as a function of time and then 
from there we calculate the equation for amp hours remember the 3600 which is required for uh, having the unit right until finally uh, we calculate as well the watt hours and uh, and with that said uh, our uh, a third objective was to uh, analytically calculate or, or calculate uh, the time that it takes for for dropping from a given voltage to another voltage and this case was from uh, 52 volts down to 48.45 volts and uh, and with that time calculate the amp hours from our battery bank and the watt hours with that said we went to excel prepared a spreadsheet that has all the information that I already uh, talked to you about it and uh, and that's it well I just provide me uh, that uh, my analytical results and my ex and my uh, sort of these are sort of analytical but they also have some uh, uh, numerical integration as well so and that's important because uh, when you see other presentation I will be talking about the Arduino and the simulation as well and I want to be sure that you understand uh, what's happening all right and what uh, why the numbers are the way they are uh, I guess that's all what I have for you guys today I always very humble and thank you for your attention have a good evening bye